One of the big problems that I've seen throughout my career in AV is just having this divide between the programmer and the installer. The installer has a huge set of responsibilities that they're responsible for, and then they do their job, they leave, and the programmer comes in and they do their stuff. And I think there needs to be more kind of collaboration between the two, because the programmers don't necessarily want to go to every single site it's probably not possible to have you everywhere. So I, I agree, there should be a, a bridge role or a hybrid sort of AV installer that has the fundamentals of networking and automation and he knows how to patch into the systems and he's confident identifying all the pieces of gear, knowing that they're working and, and, and has the skill set, the uh, fundamental um, vocabulary to describe intelligently to a programmer, hey man, uh, we just ran this program and we have XYZ going on. That way it makes you not have to be everywhere like an octopus. Yes, um, as you were talking I was thinking, you know, when I was in a role as an AV manager, if I was going to send somebody to Crestron training, um, it's a two to five day investment to do the initial stuff, um, the basic programming training. And if I was to send, send Gus there, you know, he'd spend a bunch of time learning about logic and all this um, rudimentary programming stuff that's useful, but it's stuff that he might not even be interested in. Probably not. And when the course is done, he'll come back and he'll forget most of it because, first of all, he's not really interested, but it's kind of not something that he wants to focus on. Well, I want to be useful, right? Because I know that there's a lot of stuff that has to get done in order to get to the point where the programmer is on site. I mean, the, the system has to be built, the gear has to be transported, the customer has to be happy. You know, there's construction, there's safety, there's a lot of work and we love that, but then it falls short in terms of our completeness as AV technicians if we can't intelligently identify issues that have been created from our work in order to get your work done. So that's why, sincerely speaking, the time has come that every single AV technician who wants to be taken seriously, he wants to fast track their career and be indispensable to their company, they have to get down with the automation. They have to get uh, fundamentals of IT, networking, and uh, today, Crestron. And I think there's there's only really one way right now to learn all that, and that's to kind of shadow somebody that's doing it. Take the time, if you're even allowed to in, in your role, to kind of follow somebody around that's doing the commissioning and setting things up and kind of ask questions and learn. you got to be the kind of person that wants to kind of ask the questions, but you have to be paired with somebody that wants to give you the answers, and there's a lot of challenge with that. Some of it is just the timelines. Everything's kind of condensed. Everyone's busy and, and jobs have to get done. And sometimes there's just not time. But right now, you know, you're at work for eight hours and you're, say, you're at level one. You know, you get home, you relax. If you spend an hour learning some fundamentals on the automation side of things, all of a sudden you've moved yourself beyond the status quo of the installation pack. Now you have moved up and you will be seen as more valuable. And it's hard to like Google search these types of questions because they're kind of, you want to know topics, you don't want to know just little answers to questions. You don't, you don't know what you know, don't know. You want to learn kind of a comprehensive, how do I make this, talk to this, talk to this, talk to this, like how does it even work? Well, based on my experience, let's identify some of the most common setups and some of the most common problems and provide our audience with the skill set to work through these issues and um, you know yeah let's just do that and like if we're a team and I'm the programmer and he's the installer it makes my life easier if I can send him code he can sure. load it and tell me if it works because I can mock things up as a programmer, I can mock it up 
at the shop or in the office and see that my code is pretty much working. Sometimes I got to go to the site to actually test it if it's a super complicated system. But if I can send him code for a system like this and he can just load it and report back, it's great. Or it works, but the screen, I mean, we don't have a screen here, but the screen's not working. Sure. Um, maybe I have to go by and take a look. Maybe it's something that he could help me figure out. Maybe I can remotely connect to his computer or something, but at least I know that he has the ability to do the basic setup and get it kind of working. Like if I have to send somebody that doesn't know anything and hold their hand, it's super painful as a programmer for me to do that. Super, super painful. It takes, it takes way more time than just doing it myself. Okay. So in the first segment, we dealt with identifying the basic components within an automation system. I mean, today, for the purpose of this demonstration, it was Crestron, but I know that there's uh, multiple companies. Um, Control4 is one of them. Amex is another one. Crestron. Let's um, recap a little bit on the basic pieces within a system, and then what would you like to see installers have the ability to do and let's just do it right now you guys take notes and moving forward that's part of your uh, arsenal all right so we talked about it before in the previous video but here's a basic system where the source is a laptop hooked up to an HDMI cable so this is at the table this is a DM transmitter it's HD base T which is video over cat5 essentially sure. there's a couple different ways to do that but we're not gonna go too far into that in this this discussion because it just there's a lot there's a lot of knowledge we well, can be talking how about you describe it and then I will try and with my installation perspective summarize just to make sure that our installers have it we're actually doing this live in the sense that he's an installer I'm a programmer <laughs> and he doesn't really know the stuff that we're teaching so this this is actually a good real live example I'll be the guinea pig he's not an actor <laughs> neither am I hell no so, if I continue here, um, we've got this Crestron DMPS processor. It's a video switcher and it's also a control processor. We've got a touch panel, Crestron touch panel. Sure. This is a TSW760, a 7 inch touch panel. Okay. Connected just with Ethernet, power over Ethernet into the network. And then to this guy, this DMPS processor. And then the display device is this NEC projector. We're connected directly with an HDMI to DVI cable, and we've got a control cable as well that's coming from the DMPS. Got it. So this is a basic system. Arguably, you almost don't need Crestron for a system like this, but this will let us select a source on the touch panel, okay. and it will choose the right input, it will turn the projector on, put the projector to the correct input, and you'll be able to do your presentation. Good. I mean, just because it's right here conveniently laid out in a two-foot uh, by four foot table doesn't mean that this could be at the front door of a large boardroom. This could be ceiling mounted eight feet up. This could live in a rack closed off in the corner by itself. And the transmitter could live at the bottom of the boardroom table. That's what I'm thinking when I see this gear. And then I got a, some networking going on. So let me pretend that uh, this is my first time seeing it. And the basic components of this Crestron system are a source, HDMI, so let's see, laptop, okay, so we got a laptop, goes into the transmitter, transmitter converts it from HDMI through network, uh, through a RJ45 Cat5 cable, we go through the cable into the processor, the processor accepts the video signal, and then it's, it's waiting to route it somewhere, route it to our uh, display but our display today is a projector. But then we also want the ability to control things on and off. That's what I'm thinking. I'm thinking I'm walking in. I do not want to have a remote control and I do not want to set up a ladder to press on and off. So that's where my input device comes from. So I press this, turn on system, right? You don't want to use a stick on a pole to turn on the projector. Definitely not. But let me just not, let me not get sidetracked here. Uh, so uh, we got the touch panel that presses uh, the commands, sends it to the processor. The processor sends it over this uh, control cable. Some people want to call it, if you want to get specific, it's RS-232 protocol. And that will send a command which has been engineered, designed by the programmer. 
based on his skill set and his data and that will turn on the projector. So transmitter, processor, touch panel, display. How did I do? Pretty good. Um, Thank you. There's a couple things I want to just make sure that we're factually correct without getting too in-depth. Let's not get too uh, off track here in installation land. We talked about network video. Um, Crestron does make network video product. It's the NVX line. This is the digital media line. So while this is an RJ45 Cat5 cable, sure. it is HD base T, which is not actually technically network video. Okay. Um, that being said, um, everything else that he said was correct. I want to mm -hmm. reiterate on... Gee whiz, thank you. <laughs> you passed the course. Thank you. <laughs> I mean, come on. I, I got the cable right, didn't I? You installed this, didn't you? <laughs> Guys, what we're trying to say is that it just with like in 20 minutes, you can walk away with the fundamentals of all this stuff. It, it's not that complicated. It, it, it has been pitched and sold as voodoo and black magic, but it's pretty basic once you've done one or two. Yeah. Not and to say that programming isn't uh, complex, because it is. This program, for example, would be pretty simple. It's a really basic program. Uh, one thing I want to touch on is the program that's running on this device is basically receiving a bunch of data from the touch panel, and it's sending out a bunch of data to, to the different devices. It's the program that kind of translates everything and figures out what needs to happen when certain events happen. And this would be, in the context of what we're talking about, this would be a program that's provided to you, compiled code, sure. that you would be able to load with your computer right onto, this, onto the customer processor. And it's, custom, it's a custom-made program. I got tons of questions just based on that. So let's say that uh, historically I've been installing for a year. I got a year of boardrooms and offices and schools underneath my belt. I got the tools. I know what I'm doing. But now I want to take it up a notch and I want to be able to receive uh, a program. Uh, how, how would you send that to me? Probably um, like email or Dropbox or something like that or on a, even a USB thumb drive. Okay. So now we're going to start incorporating, let's say, a laptop into our toolkit as an installer. Uh, I know a lot of people do have laptops, but I mean, myself, I sort of use mine 75% of the time just to get a video image up on a, a large system or a video wall. I definitely haven't uh, researched the programs that I need in order to be competent collaborating with a Crestron programmer. So I think let's save that for the next video. So that by the time we're done with this uh, three-parter, you guys will have the fundamentals of the system down and you'll also get an insight into what kind of computer and what kind of software and what kind of tools you need. And with that, we will provide you with the information so that you can demonstrate to your company, your boss, that you're ready to take your uh, career in another step forward and you want to show that you're serious about this. Yeah, having that initiative is definitely helpful in any sort of a work environment. Because, like, I've been in the role of a manager. Having people that work for me that show that they're interested in stuff, it's huge. It means that I can kind of put them in more training and put them into more situations where they can kind of expand their, their capabilities and be more useful to the team. People are hungry. People want to grow. People want to go places in life, they want to get nice stuff, they want to be respected, they want to work in a career where they're valued, and the only way to do that is to continually add to your skill set, in my opinion. But then again, hey man, I'm, I'm hungry, so I'm there. Yeah, and it's not like you can buy, a, like order a book from Amazon on learning this stuff, right? Nope, it's you gotta just, get your hands dirty. Yeah, and so kind of following along with people that know where you're at and know what you want to learn is super helpful, I would say. You gotta know people that are smart, in my opinion, because you could be in a company or you can have a network that their goals are not productive. So stick with us and um, let's get started. Sounds good.